Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about a brand new feature called Voice of the Customer. So this is one that a lot of people have been kind of asking about, and we've been just kind of waiting a little bit um, to bring out some of the videos. There's a lot to this one, so I'm going to just kind of forewarn you. We're going to do this one over kind of several videos just because getting it set up, getting it configured, all the different moving pieces that come into play when you start looking at survey responses versus feedbacks and outcomes and, and different situations. There's a lot to this. So what I want to do in this first video is really just what is it how do you get it set up what are some of the baseline components that come with it how do you create a survey how do you add a couple of questions you know publishing the survey out those kind of different situations and really just kind of lay the groundwork for what this could potentially be used for so if you think about it you know obviously there's a lot of reasons why you would use you know, surveys from a CRM perspective uh, could be to supplement some marketing materials that you sent out to people and you want to kind of gauge customer response based upon those individual items. Could be that you're a call center and now you've had representatives who've been working with specific people. Now that that case has been resolved, now you want to go ahead and send a survey out and just kind of gauge interest and in, in ideas based upon those types of different situations. You know, there's, there's lots of different situations where bringing surveys into the mix could really come. So from a voice of the customer standpoint, the first thing to remember is it is a solution that you have to install. So once you install and configure the solution, then you can kind of start working with it from an application perspective. Now we'll show this to you from an online perspective, but here I've gone into just an instance where I have all my CRM instances. I go into and pick my instance and then hit solutions, and this will show you all the solutions that are available. And so one of the solutions that I'll see in here is voice of the customer. Now I do already have this one installed in this instance, but basically what you do is you click your, your item that you want to do, go ahead and hit install, and then that's going to install that item into your environment. Once it's installed, then you're ready to go ahead and kind of start consuming it from an application perspective. Now there's a few different things that you have to remember when you start talking about voice of the customer. And the first thing is it's even though the solution is installed, it's not necessarily ready to go. So there is still some configuration aspects that you need to do in order to kind of get everything working and running from an application perspective. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you want to go into your settings and solutions and you'll see the voice of the customer solution. You'll go ahead and open that up. And then you'll see kind of a, a configuration page and it should take you straight to this configuration page. The first thing that you have to do is, is fully enable the functionality into your environment. So you'll go ahead and click on I agree. You'll hit enable voice of the customer and then it's just going to bring you out and, and just kind of, you know, supplement some resources and give you some individual items that would have at your disposal. Now there's a lot of different elements and pieces that it brings into this. Let's first talk about what you would see from kind of a settings configuration standpoint. So if I go into settings and I go into voice of the customer configuration, remember that voice of the customer is something that's actually using Azure and pulling information from Azure services. So the surveys are not necessarily hosted directly from a CRM perspective. Now the input information and the results of those surveys based upon what the respondents are doing will be stored in here, but the actual information is being pulled down from another scenario. So one of the things that they're going to see in here is your active configurations. This active configurations is going to show you where are you pulling this information from? So this is what actually, once people go out and they fill out the surveys, this is what's gonna go out and collect those responses. And so this is the one that kind of pre-ships as part of the default solution. And you'll notice that it's already tied to a default survey template. This is one that also ships as part of the solution, but you could use this and tie this to another survey that maybe you've created if you wanna do testing purposes. But what this is doing is just defining, you know, how often it's going out and, po and pulling for responses, how many responses as it's pulling at any individual situation or item what it's working with and then if there's any feedback generation options that it's doing what it's doing from there and then it also gives you options as far as different template types for email snippets and different things that can be used to basically populate URLs when you facilitate sending this out to your individual customers. Now within there you will then see a voice of the customer aspect.
Now this voice of the customer is got a few different elements and items that you can use to configure your, your, your items. The first thing that you'll see is kind of your collateral and your themes. So if you want to include an image in your survey and you want that image to be loaded, this is a little bit different in the fact that it doesn't necessarily use web resources to populate those images like some of the other applications that you've, you've seen within the past from a CRM perspective. This actually has you upload a static image file. Now these image files can be used on the survey itself in the headers or they can actually be used for section images based upon the individual section items that you want to work with. So if you want to bring a new image into your application, you'll go ahead, you'll click on new, define the name of the image that you want to call it. You'll save it. And once you save it, then this is going to load up the areas where you can actually go ahead and upload your image to the application. So you'll go ahead and you'll hit browse. You'll locate the image that you want to bring into the application. You'll hit submit. And then this will upload the application. Now you won't actually see the image until you have gone in and select the type of image that it is. And then it's going to show you a preview of the image along with the URL that's associated with this particular image. These images, like I said, will be used throughout the survey in the, the header itself, but you can also upload images in that would also be used from, from other aspects of the application, such as headers and, and different items from there. Your themes allow you to kind of tailor build the survey itself from a coloring scheme. Now we'll spend some time, you know, obviously going through some of this in, in some uh, future videos, but baseline here is, you know, what do you want the progress bar to look like? What do you want each section to be defined as? When somebody goes in and selects an answer, what do you want to see from those particular perspectives? And so you really just use hexadecimal colors to define how you want people to work with this. There's limited configuration from within here based upon those scenarios, but but obviously you do have some XML options that you could work with that would really truly kind of define where you can work with from, from those individual items. You, once you have kind of your images and your themes ready, now you're ready to go ahead and actually start designing your surveys. Now you'll notice in the voice of the customer that there's surveys, survey responses, and response outcomes. We're not going to spend a whole lot with survey responses and response outcomes for, for today. We'll get into that when we talk more about, you know, details and consuming some of this, but let's just talk about kind of straight survey creation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up surveys. And I'm going to go ahead and open up this default survey template. Now I could generate and create a new survey from scratch if I wanted to, um, or I could use kind of this existing one. Now, one of the key differences and, and an area that I see people you know, struggle with a little bit when they first come in here is there's, there's different forms based upon what it is that you're doing. So you have kind of your standard survey form, which is going to give you all of your general information about the survey, the name of the survey, what theme you're using for the survey, if any, what logo you're using, do you want them to have a progress bar as they move through, um, is there going to be header text that's going to be shown on each page, what's the title that's going to be uh, um, created at runtime when they walk through it, you know, just general information about your survey. So in this case, let's say I want to use my default theme. I want to upload my logo. I want to use the progress bar. I want this to be tip of the day survey. Now, there's a lot of other options that I could work with this, and we'll talk about some, like I said, some of these specific ones in, in other videos, but you can do things like doing, you know, CAPTCHA settings, you can do unsubscribing, you can limit the number of anonymous responses, you can actually have redirects based upon what they're doing and redirect them to other areas. You can define if you want to do scoring on the survey, so based upon different answers to questions, what people's scores are defined, and you can actually have them alert users. There's a lot of, you know, different options options around them. But this gives you kind of an idea in regards to what some of the, the generalized information is. So the next thing that you'll see is kind of the design element of the survey. So you'll actually see on the form that there's there's kind of multiple forms associated with them. There's one for the survey creation and then there's one for the survey designer. So if I come over here and I click on designer, 
this is going to load in my design element where I can start actually building the different components that are going to make up my survey. So in here I could go ahead and you'll see that it defaults to three kind of standard pages, your welcome page, your generalized page, and then your complete page. So this is the page that's going to show up when somebody comes into the survey. This is the page that's going to show up, um, you know, as you start adding questions and you can add multiple pages based upon what it is that you want to do with these individual items. And then obviously the one that you're going to see from a complete perspective. So then what you can do, each one of these individual elements can be modified. So if I go into this welcome page, I have the capabilities to edit the, the, the page title, the section title, as well as, you know, descriptive text. And as I add questions, I can edit, you know, specific information into there. I can edit inline by simply just clicking on the edit here, or I can actually edit it by opening it up and actually make specific changes into the item that I want to work with from here. Now the questions, just like these surveys, actually have different forms associated with them. There's a question form where you design the question, the layout, the visibility, and then there's actually a charting form that actually has specific information associated with it as well. But in here, all I would have to do is put in whatever I would want to put in. So, you know, and then I can go ahead and save close and then it's going to bring me right back to my survey and then I can start building and designing the individual elements from there. So now if I wanted to go ahead and add something, so let's say I've got this page here and I want to add something into this page. These are some of my different survey parts and basically they're just predefined questions. So they're questions that already have some of the components configured for it. You can create your own questions and kind of design them from scratch. And each one of these individual questions can be modified based upon your specific needs. So if I was just trying to do kind of a rating situation to understand what people wanted, I could come into this rating scenario, drag it over into my voice of the customer, define what I want to call this. So how would you rate your service? and then save it. Now, these images that you'll see for the stars, this could be replaced with smiley faces. They have different options and formatting options that you can achieve just by simply clicking on the edit button in here and that would give you some of that flexibility. And like I said, there's different options here based upon what it is that you wanna do. And we can walk through, like I said, some of these in, in a few other videos. When you're ready, you can preview your survey by clicking on preview. This will open up your survey in a preview window so you can actually navigate through it just like a user would, basically like a user would from an anonymous standpoint. If they were going to take the survey and work with it um, anonymously, this would be what you would be seeing from an application standpoint. So this gives you kind of a, an idea of what that process is going to look like as you navigate through the survey itself. So here's where you would go ahead. You'd click on next. You could preview what you want to do. You can even preview the submit functionality and you can see what it's going to look like as you are actually going through and, and working through this. Once your survey is ready, and again, there would be a lot more moving pieces to this than what you're seeing here, but once your survey is ready, then you can go ahead and you can publish your survey. Once your survey is published, now it's ready for you to start distributing out and having users actually kind of, you know, respond to it. Now, if I were to come back into my survey itself, one of the key things that I want to draw your attention to is down here underneath invitations and actions, because ultimately we have to get this survey out to people. And so we want to be able to, you know, distribute it. Now, there's a couple of different ways that these surveys can be distributed. One of the key ways is just through an anonymous link. You'll see in here that there's an anonymous link that you can basically use to send in an email or attach in an email. Somebody can click on that survey link and it'll open up the survey and, and start taking the responses to it. The other option that you have is this email snippet. So what you can do is you can take this email snippet, whether you copy it from here or you come up onto your bar and you hit copy snippet. And this is going to take kind of a unique URL based upon that scenario. And it's going to distribute that URL out in an email. And then what happens is once that URL, whether it's through a CRM email activity or however you design that you want to do it, it's going to replace that snippet with a customized link. So that way, when somebody clicks on it, you can see that that link was maybe associated 
associated with this contact or this account and this is the person who responded to that survey and then you can actually start seeing the results of those surveys as people are clicking on it and again in a future video I can show you how that works from a distribution standpoint maybe based upon when a case is done but now I could come in here and I could in essence take the survey once it's been published so now by clicking on the anonymous link this is what a user would see if they were going to go ahead and take the survey from an application standpoint so the survey will open up I can answer a couple of questions on the survey and then I can kind of run through it from there so I can hit next on my welcome page answer my question submit my results from my survey takes me to my completion page and then I can close out of here. Once your surveys have been completed and people start to respond to those surveys, then you will be able to go into this survey responses. Now these won't get populated right away. These take some time in regards to that polling period and how often it goes out and pulls those survey responses. But as people are actually taking and corresponding with these surveys, all of these different responses will be captured. Now there's, there's different ways you can do responses. There's responses and feedback, and we can talk a little bit more about that in future videos as well. But this at least lets you see the specific responses that have been gathered based upon the surveys that have been published out to this point with people taking them and working through them. So that's a quick, very, very quick little overview of how it works, how you can, you know, what the different components are and some of the baseline setting up. What we'll do as we work through in, pre in future videos is we'll actually take some time and we'll, we'll break each one of these individual elements down and, and talk a little bit about, you know, redirecting people based upon specific answers and, and those types of items because you have all of that capability available along with distribution capabilities and, and items from there. But it, it really is, the more you play with it, it is a really cool utility. I'm very excited about it. It's something that I've done, you know, a fair amount with and I just kind of keep discovering new stuff every Day, but I think you'll really enjoy it if you take a little bit of time and kind of play with it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying take care. Thanks, everybody, and have a good one.